whether or not a woman should give an example of courage to men is neither here nor there. At a moment of desperate danger, one must do what one can. I think that flight, even if it brings us to safety, is not in our interest. Every man born to see the light of day must die. But that one who has been emperor should become an exile, I cannot bear. May I never be without the purple I wear, nor live to see the day men do not call me your majesty. If you wish safety, my lord, that is an easy matter. We are rich, and there is the sea, and yonder are ships. But consider whether, if you reach safety, you may not desire to exchange that safety for death. As for me, I like the old saying that the purple is the noblest shroud. Theodora 532. This brief speech by the wife of today's influential human gave him the courage he needed to save his throne and rule for decades. What's up, weird people of this planet called Earth? Welcome to episode 36 of HMIH podcast with yours truly, Damlari Mapa. So I got really sunk in the story of today's influential human because of how interesting, eventful, inspiring and so many adjectives I can't count that his lifetime was. I'll be talking about the main reasons why he became influential but the details of how this happened is a long interesting story I would advise you to find out yourself if you wish. So let's start from the beginning slash middle. Today's influential human, Justinian, was born in a town called Tauresium, Dardinia, around 482, to a peasant family of farmers. So he also turned out to be a farmer as a young boy, most likely. But what is certain is that he was from a peasant family. And along with his parents, I'm sure he was completely oblivious of his monumental destiny. It all started when his mother's brother, Justinian's uncle, who was also a farmer, left for Constantinople, the capital of the ancient Eastern Roman Empire, also known as Byzantium, to seek for a better life, greener pastures. He joined the army from initially being palace guard and rose in rank, which can be said this lightly but wasn't an easy task. Doing well for himself in Byzantium, he called upon his family, which could be said to be just his wife alone. But since he had no child, he decided to call upon his sister's son to come to the city, whose name at the time was Flavius Petrus Sebastius, <laughs> who later named himself Justinian I in honor of his generous role model, his uncle, who also sponsored him to get the best education he couldn't get. This would later prove very useful to both of them. In the year 518, the then emperor Anastasius died without an heir, so there was a succession crisis. Justin, who was the head of God at the time, was a big stakeholder in deciding who was the next emperor as he controlled troops in the capital city. So one of the imperial officials tried to bribe him to support their candidate, but Justin ended up using the bribe to counter bribe influential senators to support him to become the next king. And this was most likely a suggestion that was brought by his nephew, Justinian. And thus, Justin became the next emperor of ancient Eastern Roman Empire. How shocking. From a dreaming peasant farmer to the ruler of an entire empire. Hmm. Destiny. As Justin had become king, he still wasn't educated enough to rule a kingdom. And that's when Justinian came in. Justin made his young nephew his very trusted advisor. And this young man would turn out to be the brilliant mind that did everything he could to guard and solidify the rule of his uncle, Justin. It was in the period of Justin's rule that Justinian met his future wife, Theodora, who was at the time an actress. Remember her from the beginning statements of this episode. She turned out to be way more than just a good wife later in Justinian's life. Although she was initially an actress, escort or prostitute as people would call it and there was a law that banned government officials from marrying actresses but because of love justinian made sure to convince his uncle to abolish this law before he died on august 1 527 justin justin died and justinian 
who had been appointed as associate emperor some months earlier became the new emperor and theodora became his queen justinian unlike his uncle was a big dreamer an extremely ambitious man and was waiting to become the emperor before setting out to achieve all that he had dreamt of which included uniting the lost western half of the roman empire but he had to start from fixing a lot of things in his region first which he did he appointed very effective officials to increase revenue through effective tax collection systems another to create a new effective law document named the corpus juris civilis which inspired the civil law that a lot of countries use today and the last one to be his main man in the military his name belisarius who was a military genius according to him on january 13 532 something terrible happened a mob rebelled in the city of constantinople why they were a mob of opposition chariot racing fans who teamed up because they wanted two men to be exonerated from a punishable crime there's a backstory behind it but it's way too long so i'll just skip well the king didn't initially accept their request and it eventually turned into an uncontrollable rampage that caused the burning of about a quarter of the city justinian decided to finally accept the request of this mob but it was too late by this time they wanted more probably too much as they decided they needed a new royal emperor on hearing this justinian fled to his palace where his advisors were counseling him to flee this was when theodora justinian's historical wife made the courageous statement at the beginning of this podcast which sparked her husband's confidence to give birth to a burning raging fire justinian summoned belisarius and mondos who were armed leaders and nurses who justinian trusted he told nurses to go and bribe members of the blue fraction of the mob which he did while belisarius and mondos carried their troops to the hippodrome where the mob was to crush the rebellion which cost the lives of about 30,000 unarmed men. After this catastrophe, the king grows firm wanting to move on achieving his great dream of the reconquest of the western Roman Empire. 39 days after the incident, he gave a command to rebuild the burnt down church in the capital to a structure way more magnificent than the former the new Hagia sophia that stood as a great church as the greatest church in the world for about a thousand years and subsequently the entire part of the lost structures in the city after which the conquest of justinian started he first directed his friend and armed general belisarius to conquer part of north africa occupied by the vandals at the time which he did with a whole lot of work. Subsequently, they tried to conquer the Lost West, now modern day Italy, where Rome stands. The story is very long, but I'll just tell you that he later achieved this to an extent at long last, but would later be lost after his death on 14th November 565, aged 36, childless, after his dear wife had died almost 20 years earlier than him due to most probably cancer well justinian dreamed the dream that almost no human dared to dream and was blessed with the grace to achieve a lot of these dreams a lot of details were skipped but now i'm sure you know the major reason why this human became so influential he achieved something that no one absolutely no other person that ruled after him could achieve and he was successful at what he did but with a lot of controversial events well that's it on today's episode of history's most influential humans guys please kindly drop a comment or leave a feedback about today's episode follow me on my social media platforms with damlari underscore mapper and i'll see you all next month on another episode of history's most influential humans podcast peace